you know when you got that automatic uh, got that automatic uh, balance uh, inverter whatever it is you know leveler picture writer upper screen tilter application enabled on the friendly but unfriendly tablet screen application what do you think of that well I'll tell you what it 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 works at all the times I really don't need it to work you know what I mean yes <laughs> anyways um, you know these assholes that run this internet have gotten like way too fucking <sighs> Egg, 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 egg. Serious. You know, it's like they got the Hugh Hefner pink. Pink. Wait. I'm not, I'm not doing this right. The cop was the cop was throwing these signs to me the other day and I, I'm trying to copy them. The pink bunny rabbit slippers sign. Like that. You know, it looks like eh. <laughs> You know, kind of uh, f fucking. You do it right, and you get a shadow figure of a rabbit, but it it don't look like a rabbit unless you turn it like this. Yeah. Anyway, kind of about the same way they turn your hands in and they fucking cuff you with your thumbs. They twist you and shit. If you've never been cuffed, you don't know. We ain't even talking on the same page. So. uh there you go. You know, they they, they, they get uh, female trainees, you know, young, fresh out in the field. Sheriffs, you know, frisk and search me and cuff me up and practice on my shit. <laughs> so this guy, you can handle him here. There's six of us, don't worry. If he moves, we'll beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> and he knows that. You know, so, so, yeah, training 101. <laughs> for everybody and I smoke weed Ted and I'm not looking for a job thanks I think a job would get in the way of my create creative pro productivity and quitting smoking weed would definitely contribute to a lack of um, of acuity and vision, and be uneducational at best. <clears throat> so you know, I'm trying to promote good health and education: hunting, trapping, fishing, growing your own, gardening, uh, holistic health. Uh, natural meats, uh, natural pres preservation, uh, self-defense. I'm down for everything you're down for, plus dead some. I'm down for everything you're down for, plus the weed. That's about where we divert, di uh, diverge, where the road diverged in the woods. The proverbial, you know, you went down the, the other path and I took the path of least travel because I'm not like a professional weed smoker or anything I'm not a stoner like everybody thinks or am I a drug addict I'm just a, a guy that uh, has some aches and pains and I felt and I through empirical uh, observation trial and error I found that this stuff actually works for me now, it might not work for anybody else, and we're not talking about anybody else. We're just talking about me. So, anyways, it, it, it's neither here nor there relative to anything that I'm saying because I'm not professing that my way is a universal way or that everybody should adopt my methods or my way of thinking or anything like that. I don't profess to be some, you know, pariah messiah or something, you know, just a cowboy. I'm a cowboy from uh, New York. Uh, got transplanted out to New Mexico like McLeod. Or was it the other way around? 
Anyways, and then I came to California in 78. It went to work for the CIA. Sort of. I think it was more like leisure. Leisure world. You get a car, you get an apartment, you get stuff. You know, a leg, a leg, a foot in the door. Let's see what you got, kid. That's what you get. Right across the parking lot, it's Atari, you know? Right out the front door's Locky, across the street. We're sitting out there eating lunch and Harriers coming up and down. They're top secret at that time. Nobody knew about them except us. And it's like, what the hell is that? Did you just see that? Everybody's rubbing their eyes. Jet comes in, stops midair, hovers. Hovers down into a landing. First time we'd ever seen that kind of thing. Us fresh out of the fields in New Mexico, man, Albuquerque. And even over there at Kirkland, we had never seen nothing like that. It wasn't available at the time. It was um, top secret technology that was being tested and rolled out at, during the Fal Falklands War for the first time. It was tested right across the street from when I first started working out here. Anyway, you talk about work and jobs. You put in a whole life, like Grandpa, 30 years in the factory, only to come down with uh, leukemia or Hodgkin's disease or some other form of cancer caused by toxic agents known to the state to, to cause it, but they don't want to pay up or nothing, and then you're dead. And your relatives are left grieving and uh, struggling and, and without you. That's how it was with Grandpa. He passed away at 65, which, which in... The choir family was not unusual, really. Uncle Teddy died at 58. He preceded uh, my grandma in death, which was heartbreaking for her. He passed away in 1990, 90, 91, something like this. And then, uh, she passed away in 1997 at the age of 85. My dad just, we just lost my dad. July 24th, he passed away at age 84. He was pushing for her record, but didn't quite make it. Um, not bad, though, Big Ed. And then there uh, was my Aunt Peggy. She passed away at age 66. And my Uncle Dick passed away at age 67. So you got, you know, you have... Uh, <clears throat> four uh, four members out of the six in that family passed away relatively early, 66 years old or younger. So they say, you know, you can take all the ages of your relatives on both sides of both your mother's and your father's family, all their siblings, <clears throat> and you can add them all together and you can divide that number and come up with the average age at which your life expectancy might be barring any unforeseen accidents or other unannounced health risks or whatever. And it's just a you know general guideline to for your own morbidity, <laughs> mortality, whatever you want to call it. Um, I try not to put too much focus on it, but as you get older, you focus on it more and more because it's a Buddhist practice to focus upon your, your passing as a meditation or effort in... Uh, Realizing that your life is a continuation of that same uh, event. You're always in it. <clears throat> You're always passing through life from birth to death in the same continuum. It's a, it's a continuum it's, that we're in. It, the, some existentialist believes it's one and the same, that transcendence within the world is possible given the right practice, which led me to start thinking about, you know, everybody's preaching these gospels of republicanism or democratism, and I can totally relate to Ted's philosophy of, like, I'm not for either one, because neither am I. And I think any thinking person, any person that's educated, and obviously he's educated, I don't know where he got his education. Street? Maybe. 
or maybe he went back to night school. I don't know, but he's educated more so than most people. So I refer to Ted a lot because I like Tedisms, Ted Talk, all that stuff. It's all centered around the idea of, you know, something that's really common and touches base with every human being, the teddy bear, the panda, black and white, lovable, fuzzy. Cops adapted the color scheme because it's the most lovable creature on the planet. Now, people go, well, what's the red and blue light thing about? Well, they're com complementary colors. Number one, their wavelengths are at the opposite ends of the spectrum. Secondly, one is an aggressive color, the other one is a calming color. So flashed alternatively gives a very confusing uh, effect, if you will, to the uh, anthropological mind, you know, the subconscious. Is he my friend or is he my foe? Is he my friend or is he my foe? Good cop, bad cop, you know, red, blue, red, blue, Democrat, Republican. And knowing this, then, the political parties of our country have adopted excuse me, the same mechanics and it's even at work in everything that we have in our country, the flag, the color scheme, uh, the cop cars, you know, the uh, national colors that have been adopted. And if you notice, there's a host of, color, of countries that have flags with three colors. Some have four, some have five. But I don't think there's any that have more than five colors. I could be mistaken about that, too. But generally, what we're talking about is sigils and icons and power symbols. Because of the, those kinds of things, are, they appeal to the megalomaniacal mind. And, uh, <clears throat> and also the schizophrenic in, in everyone. You know, and people that don't think there's a schizoid man in themselves is wrong. There's a prehistoric schizoid man in every single person. <clears throat> now, whether it comes to roost or not, full blown, is a different matter. But the fact is, is if your life is threatened enough, it will come to roost because it's a primal instinct. Much like Ted wears his insignias with a spear chucker, the spirit of the wild, the stick guy. Um, I like it. I want a shirt. Ted, can I buy one of them shirts from you, buddy? I need one. <laughs> and um, so anyway, spear chucking. It's just, it's that primal instinct. And man, it's like the Lord of the Flies, you know? Bunch of kids on the island, daddy's not home, and mommy's nowhere to be found, and kids are at play. Hey, fat boy, give me them glasses. You know, let's go hunt some pigs. <laughs> I don't mean to be facetious about that, but that's kind of <coughs> that's kind of the general um, wind blowing out there on on the, on the surfing net, isn't it? Hey, you got Donald Trump meeting with Sheriff Clark with an incendiary handshake. <laughs> in Milwaukee, you know, which brought me to this joke we used to tell us kids on the bus <coughs> when I was like 13 and on the swim team. There was a joke about this pitcher. You got drunk before the Port World Series game and um, the Milwaukee Brewers ended up uh, losing the game, man. Boom. And the opposing team says, well, you know, we only won because Milt Famey, who was a famous pitcher at the time with no hitters and strikeouts and all this other stuff, he got drunk before the game. He drank six bottles of beer. And they go, well, thought that beer would be known as the beer that made Milt Famey walk us because he walked in winning runs. Now, how much of that is true? I would have to say, based on Doc Ellis's <laughs> The No-No documentary, uh, probably some of it. It's not.